We packed our bags ready to leave Dallas, and our cars roared into life. Auto Tempest had challenged us to drive our cheap Ferraris a thousand miles to Gateway, Colorado, to a road that some say is the best in America. But while we were ready, our cars were more of a mixed bag. Ed's Cheatermobile 599 was one warning light away from a major breakdown. Tyler's Mint 456 had never done such a big trip in its entire life, and my 308 was so obviously broken that even I was starting to admit it wasn't very good. Tell us what a day in Freddy's life in that car is gonna be like. Well, I'll tell you what it feels like to have a Ferrari for actual Camry money. It's not great, to be honest. How many of those eight cylinders do you feel like are participating in this journey? I'd say about five and three quarters. Well, I can tell you there's no way I'm following those five and three quarters because the smoke, it's getting into my cabin and smelling awful too. You're crop dusting me, basically. You'll live. Freddie, the thing that concerns me, though, is the no windows and no lights. And what happens when it gets dark? Listen, there's plenty of bridges that will cross when we get there, and uh, right now I'm just enjoying my Ferrari with my flat plane crank V8. Well, all the complaints I had about my Ferrari on the track, uh, I'm glad that I have them now on a thousand mile road trip. The comfort, the softness, I I'm ready. Nobody needs that kind of negativity in their life, Tyler. Yeah, no way I'm following that smoke show. Oh, highway entrance, hello. Sorry, Freddy, just might have cut him off a little bit. Show off. Freddy, do you feel like the 308 has more or less of its total functionality as a percentage than the Rolls Royce did? Oh, much more. I don't think this is exactly the right car. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I have zero brakes. I have no brakes. Oh, ah, goodness gracious. Both had lights. Like, you can't even do hand signals because you can't roll the window down. Well, it is Texas, so turn signals are optional. Well, everything works on my car except for the radio. It's set to Japanese radio frequencies. Wonder if there's something left in the changer, though. Tyler, how comfortable are you right now? <laughs> you have to commend your choice of wardrobe today, both appropriate for the car and I very much appreciate the support of the channel. I've been a gated community member for quite some time. That you are. Do you feel like it lives up to the hype? I mean, obviously we hype up gated manual transmissions a lot, but I, mean, I truly love the experience of both the noise and just the you know, I think of all the gated cars that I've had, the Testarossa, the Gallardo, the Countach even, this one is the most satisfying as far as the, the clink clink noises and the movement. It's, it's very nice. My gated manual is like uh, I'm shifting in molasses uh, mixed with a bunch of sawdust. So I'm not sure I share that experience with you, have you been able to discern about how much it leaks on like a per mile or per hour basis for the oil? It's between concerning and alarming. <laughs> Thank you very much for this car, Tyler. It's wonderful. You had four months to get it ready, Freddie. I'm turning this empty corner of my shop into the ultimate car lover's lounge. So some of you might be asking why I'm doing this instead of a car build. Relaxation is important, not only for having fun, but for your mental health as well. 
And I don't know that I've ever seen you more excited at the prospect of getting a car than you were as soon as Tyler showed you that opportunity. So I feel like you went into this pretty eyes well open. They're pretty open right now, mainly because of the oil smoke. Man, I have to tell you, it is brilliant. I mean, I, I really wanted to buy a 355 F1 Spider because quite honestly, I think that is the worst car Ferrari ever made. But I also thought, you know, Tyler already has a 348, Tyler already used a 360 in car track. And those are two truly good options. They are. What you would buy for under 50 grand. But I think that uh, I'm very, very happy with my choice. You know, you talk too much for somebody that just cheated their way into potentially winning this competition. We've had several recent installments of Tyler Weens, so I don't think either of us have much of a chance at the moment. Tyler actually came out on top on this one. Tyler Weens! Undesirable. Good luck, you guys. <laughs> You're not betting on you, sir. Thank you very much. Got him. Ferraris are known for many things, fuel economy not being one of them. Since Freddy's gauges were not functional and mine were effectively invisible, I felt like it was time to top off the cars and quite honestly, I was due for some spinal decompression. There's a view season nine miles, y'all wanna stop there? Now we know who's not from Texas. Yes, we can stop at the Bucky. No, he was talking about Gary Busey's house. Hello. <laughs> A few hours into our journey, we were still barely out of the greater Dallas area. The questionably named gas station allowed us to fill our cars, oh. have a quick lunch, and purchase some Texas-appropriate fashion accessories. We still had 800 miles of driving ahead of us, so Ed decided to entertain us with some VinWiki car trivia. So Toyota builds three to 400,000 Camrys a year. My 599 was the 150,000th car they built. The pizza that you opened the series with was around 240,000. Tyler, I think yours is like the 75,000th Ferrari they ever built. And now I think they're on about 275,000. So in all the years of production, there are fewer Ferraris than there are 2021 Camrys. How does your brain have room for that kind of crap? <laughs> Tyler, do you know what the top speed is supposed to be on that thing? On my car? No, it's barely the speed limit on your car. I'm in on the 456. It's actually in the 190s. This was the fastest four-seat car in the world at the time. Holy cow. I cannot imagine what that thing would feel like at 190 miles an hour. Guys, not to be uh, Debbie Downer, but can you uh, slow down maybe 10 miles an hour or so? Because I feel like I'm at 5,000 RPM right now, and this car is getting very, very hot. Well, you don't know that it's getting hot because you have no gauges. I know that it's getting hot because my skin hurts. I'm, I'm sweating pretty, pretty badly right now. We could cut a hole in the roof. Yeah, then it would look like Tom Selleck's 308. Let's make it a Targa. Guys, I just got a thumbs up from a passerby. Did you guys get a thumbs up? I don't think so. You sure he wasn't pointing at something falling off or on fire? No, he was probably trying to get the Ford probe out of my way. <laughs> cool. At this point, with the arrow straight Texas roads mixed with my scorching 308's interior, coupled with the fact that there's only so many Ed Bullion obscure car facts a human can take, I was desperate for a new way to pass the time. Ed, would you pass your race? Yeah, maybe we should all floor it in top gear, which for funny, I don't even think he has fourth. All, all right, right, lining up. Five, four, one, go! Come on! Oh, were you guys
guys race? Oh, I, I didn't know that. I, I slept through the whole thing. I blacked out. I blacked out. running quite poorly uh, at this moment. My car is surging. Oh my God, I'm shocked. Thanks, Tyler. Right, that's truly unbelievable that your car could malfunction in such a way, particularly when there was a margin there for an operator error. Oh. I think I might be running out of gas. Come on, come on. My car died. There's one just right up here. We'll meet you up there. How far away is it? I don't know, it's off the distance, maybe a mile, two miles. Just right up here, I see it on the right. It's got sandwiches, please. Ready? Is he out of range? Probably. We'll meet him up here. Are you hungry? I am. I can do a sandwich. Do you think we should take him some gas, or do you feel like he needs the exercise? Now, it's at this point where I probably say uh, I, don't, I don't like old cars at all. It's extremely hot in here. I ran out of gas because the gauges don't work. I can't fit. This gives me gumby hair, and it's very, very slow. And it has a flat plane crank, but it doesn't matter because okay, okay, I got it. Well, life has nearly killed me, and my mind is put me on. I can barely crawl, I've got to walk where these angels feed a tree. Well, my cup is nearly empty, I've got such a long, long way to go. My cup is nearly empty, I've got such a, such a long, long way to go. Got to lay down here and rest before I can take another step down that lonesome road. Why don't you guys act like you haven't seen a Ferrari broken down on the side of the road before? After my very considerate colleagues waited for me to get some much needed midday cardio, my fully fueled 308 was ready for hundreds of flawless, trouble free miles. Gentlemen, we're a good ways away, so we need to keep making time. Freddie is way back there, way, way, way back. Freddie, you're lagging a little bit there. Like the little engine that sometimes could. The little engine that always will, Ed. Not only do I have no speedometer, I have no tachometer, no fuel, no water, no oil, and no lights of any kind. So uh, I am flying blind, and Tyler is our best bet to see how fast we're actually going. Well, and I'm in kilometers, so I have no idea. It requires math. It says one. 40 something right now. Well, that's got to be a good boost to the confidence, just cruising at 140 through northern Texas. Well, to convert you, you take it divided by two and add 20 or a percentage? I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, 100 kilometers an hour is 62.5 miles an hour. It's 5 8, so you can multiply by 5 and divide by 8. So 140 times 5 is. I like a thousand minus eight is so we're going nine hundred miles an hour. Exactly, exactly. I got 
gotta say, this thing is behaving just about perfectly. When you put a car like this on a road like this, on a trip like this, it's like Gordon Ramsay making a child cry. It's like Liam Neeson picking up the phone to a kidnapper. It's like Miley Cyrus letting down civilization. It is as in its element as anything could ever be, and you couldn't fall in love with it any more than you do. This car is perfect. So good. I had no idea that Ferrari collaborated with Lazy Boy in the 90s. They did such a good job together with the 456. Okay, situation report in the Ferrari 308. I have been driving for most of the day and I cannot hear anything. The wind noise is intense. Actually, it's even worse because this window doesn't close all the way, so I hope we don't get any rain. Thankfully, I don't see any clouds in the I will confess that I have quite a bit of a line out of my transmission tunnel here. It's like it's right under my right elbow, and particularly in sixth gear under throttle, it, uh, it whines pretty loud. Yeah, you seem to have a whine coming from the driver's seat as well. It's, uh, it's really weird. It uh, started when you started driving the car and uh, hasn't stopped since, honestly. It's more of a droning whine, isn't it, Freddie? It drones on and on. <laughs> we drove and drove and drove for what seemed to be an eternity through the vast nothingness of Texas. Welcome to Amarillo. That means yellow in Spanish. But miraculously, and despite what Ed and Tyler thought, my little 308 was getting better. It wasn't fast and it certainly wasn't comfortable, but at this moment, it made a lot of sense. And then that moment passed. Freddy, in addition to its normal smoke, there may be a different kind of, should I say steam coming out of it? I would say that qualifies as hopeless. Are you on fire? To be honest, it kind of looks like it. I'm going to pull over and uh, assess the damage. Uh, I, I wager it probably shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Well, that sounds easy. Well, we would hate to get in your way, so I'm sure there's a lot of fun touristy things to do around here. Uh, we'll let you know where we're at. Stop it. As my colleagues had yet again left me on the side of the road, there we go. I enlisted the help of the camera crew, just in case my car trouble was the explodey kind. So I smelled a lot of coolant. Actually, can I can I borrow one of you? Come here, come here. Just uh, just pull up on that while I pull on this. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, so the water pump looks like it just puked its seals and flung coolant everywhere. And now, oh, that's a lot of coolant on the ground. As bad as this looked, I was uniquely equipped to solve my 308's problem. Because since I am the warranty, I bought a brand new water pump before the trip started and brought all the tools to get the job done with me. It would only take an hour or two, or six. Hey guys, this is, um, this might take a little bit. Oh, we'll find what you to do. Take your time, Freddy. I like that they sound happy. I like, I like that they're just, just so ha Yeah, it's okay, we'll sightsee, you know, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm here with a terminally sick Ferrari, and uh, yeah, no problem, good. I'm the one that didn't cheat, so uh, all good deeds, right? Perfect, perfect. Freddie having his capable hands full afforded Tyler and I the chance to take in all the beautiful sights of Amarillo, a lovely place this time of year. Of course, as car enthusiasts, the first stop had to be the world-famous Cadillac Ranch. Try not to spray into the wind. Yeah. 
Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, you're wearing green. All right. Yeah. It's windy. You think Freddy's having this much fun? He's doing what he loves. <laughs> wrenching every day. Yeah. But, but it, it should... should have been wrenching two to three weeks ago. Absolutely. That man puts the pro in procrastination. Let me see if I can make this sticker stick. I doubt it. Ha ha! Very nice. Branded. You hungry? I think so. What are you in the mood for? There's really only one place we can go. When you're here, your family? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. One of the best things about owning a Ferrari is instantly being an expert on everything authentically Italian. So Ed and I went to the most Italiano restaurante in town where I showed how we Kansans do wine tastings. <laughs> Good year. Strong. Very strong. <laughs> Having toured Italy, Ed left a Ferrari owner style tip before we set off to see how Freddie was faring with the water pump. Honestly, you're supposed to do this from underneath, but it is very, very cold. We arrived to find that he had the water pump out, but was ready for a break, so he joined us around the fire pit. Well, there's no such thing as a bad day on the road in a Ferrari, but that was a very long day on the road in our Ferraris. It's great for me. That car's so comfortable. It's like a Cadillac Eldorado, except a Ferrari with a V12 and manual. It's just amazing. Barely. Yeah, I'm sure all the Ford Probe owners say that. Freddie, obviously we did not make it as far as we should have today because of your car. My water pump exploded, so uh, I'm fixing it now. Will that have been caused by your Instagram assistant's behavior on top of your car? I don't think so, no. Tomorrow, we need to make it all the way to Gateway because Auto Tempest has promised us that it will be the greatest road in America. And I can't wait to experience it with my Mint 308 that only has a few little issues. What do you have to drink to feel that way? Freddie, I will admit this, this was a hard challenge. This is probably the hardest challenge Auto Tempest has ever put upon us just because of the current climate for collector cars that we're in. Yeah. Like a year ago, finding a Ferrari for the price of a Camry would have been easy. Yeah. Easy. Honestly, over the past three months, I tried to buy so many should have been cheap Ferraris only to be not outbid, but once I had agreed to a deal with the seller, they unethically asked another dealer for a number and they outbid me by $30,000 or $20,000 on every single dealer. So then yes, they're going to sell it and they're make money. They're putting it in inventory for way more than I would pay. Because originally I wanted to do an FF. Because yeah. I was like, you can end up with a $550 lease payment on a Camry. I could have easily had a $500 payment on an a That's $100,000 car, so it's more cheating. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted to cheat so much. No, I wanted to demonstrate if you buy a $30,000 Ferrari, it's really not all it's cracked up to be. Oh, absolutely. So the reason why I got this Ferrari, well, actually why you found this Ferrari for me, is because there really wasn't anything for that price range, like literally zero. And it's just, it, it really is not a good experience. When I saw it, I thought it was the perfect car for you because it needed all that work and we had plenty of time to get it ready for car trek. All right, and Tyler. you didn't do anything. All right, Tyler. The reason why is because even if you have $20,000 into this car, which would have made it reasonably running and driving, you'd still end up with a stock 308 that gets his door blown off by a Toyota Camry. It's not a Ferrari that you can say, hey, look how fast my car is. I would still get my butt spanked by both of you, not literally, in your V12s. That's just the reality of the situation. So you're saying the answer is four, five, six. There's still those out there for Camry money in the 40s, low 50s, if you're gonna push it a little bit. That's perfect. Yeah, but the engine has to come out every few years. That doesn't make any yes. sense seven, five, you know, people are stretching that out for longer. It's oh, big okay. Deal. So the modern Ferraris where you don't need any of those, the cheapest one of those is a Ferrari F430. Those are even going up now. I mean, we tried to find one for this challenge. I found the perfect one. Oh my goodness. And it was a rental car for driving tours of Sonoma. So one imagine, country. 
a rental car that was only driven by drunk people. By drunk people. <laughs> for its whole life. It was on its third engine, its second transmission, and it was a 40 grand car all day long. Like, that's how much the car was worth. It brought $60,000. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. I bought a car in 2009 that would have been just the perfect car for this. I already had the reputation around Atlanta as being the kind of guy that would buy just any junk exotic car. And T-Pain had given as a birthday present to some up and coming rapper, I can't even remember his rap name, a 2000 360 Modena. He had stored it at his parents' house and his mom had tried to jumpstart it backwards and fried all the electronics. Mm. And this was like six months after I'd gotten married and I was running the exotic car rental company. And so Ferrari of Atlanta called and they're like, hey, this guy can't pay his service bill. And he wanted $60,000 for it. So <laughs> I think I offered him 30,000 bucks. <laughs> and of course, this guy was a shrewd negotiator. So we met right smack dab in the middle at $31,000. Oh. And uh, but I didn't have $31,000. But Megan, my wife had <laughs> about that much money saved. And so I convinced my new wife to buy us a Ferrari. <laughs> life uh, savings. Off of her life savings. That's trust. Yes. That's, that's a, However, we um, fixed it, put a few thousand dollars in, and then I sold it for 60 grand once it was a real running and everything, you know, sellable car. Mm -hmm. And that very much ingratiated her to all the great things that come from buying terrible examples of really cool cars. Well, there's more to do. We gotta keep going. Yes, a lot of miles tomorrow. Okay. So, you think you'll be ready for the morning? I'm feeling less confident. Next time on Car Trek. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is banging again. Don't lose a man! This is what I do! So, Auto Tip has challenged us to recreate our favorite movie scene with our Ferraris. <laughs> Whoever thought a brain like this would make a grandpa car? Head looks absolutely miserable. What did you do? What were you doing when you were supposed to make this car work? <laughs> I need to get out of this car right now because I will die of inhalation issues. Oh, this is so much better. We're all known for making very questionable buying decisions, but one thing that we do exactly right is that we start our search at autotempest.com. Autotempest compiles the results from all the major listing sites in a single place, so we find the cars faster, we find the cars better, or at least some of us do. Some of us buy the wrong car every time. That's not true at all, but Autotempest allows us to do crazy road trip stuff like this. So if you're enjoying the series, then definitely click the link in the video description below to support Autotempest, to support us, and to find an awesome car for yourself. Yes, links in the description below. Autotempest, all the cars, one search, and don't fart. <laughs>